Solving exponential and logarithmic equations. These can be done several different ways and so uh, the notes are probably going to be a little bit longer than usual today. The first concept would be having exponents on both sides of the equation. Before I start with examples, I want to make sure your mind is warmed up about your rules of exponents. And so, recall, if you have x to the third times x to the fourth, when you have like bases and you're multiplying, you are expected to add the exponents. So x to the three times x to the fourth would be x to the three plus four, which is seven. You add the exponents when you're multiplying like bases. If you have a base raised to a power that is then raised to a power, power to a power concept is actually multiplication. a to the fourth raised to the fifth tells me to take the four times five and so I can call that a to the twentieth. That's the power to the power concept. Algebraically you're going to start to see expressions as your exponents. So I've got a to the x minus 1 raised to the third. This is a situation where I can distribute that 3 across the exponents and call this a to the 3x minus 3 because I distribute that 3 to the x, distribute the 3 to the negative 1, and I get a to the 3x minus 3. Reverting back to this first idea, if I have a base raised to the x minus 5 times a base raised to the 2x plus 3, when you have base times base, you're expected to add the exponents. So for this situation, the x and the 2x can be added to give me 3x. The negative 5 and the 3 can be combined to create negative 2. So b to the x minus 5 times b to the 2x plus 3 I add those exponents and I get b to the 3x minus 2, a common base there. And that's what's important. You always have to have the common base when you're doing these rules. So then let's look at our first example. First example, we're going to start off with 10 raised to the x minus 3 equaling 100 to the 4x minus 5. Now this is an example of solving equations where you have both sides of the equation set up with exponents. And so what I need to do is have a like base. My first step, I'm going to call this 10 to the x minus 3, and I recognize that 100 is really 10 squared. Since it's 10 squared, I can use this power to a power concept like I did right here and distribute this 2 to the 4x minus 5 and see how I was getting to a like base. As I distribute that 2 across the rest of the exponent, this gives me 10 raised to the x minus 3 is equal to 10. I distribute 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Once I have the like base raised to exponents, I am permitted just to take those exponents and set them equal. I'll explain why this works in another example here. I just want to use the algebra right now. So I'm just taking my exponents because I have like bases on both sides of the equation and I set them equal to one another. The algebra now, pretty simple. We can move this x that's on the left to the right, making it a negative x, and this negative 10, we can move that to the left. As I move those terms, negative 3 plus 10 becomes 7 and the 8x minus an x becomes 7x. I divide by 7 and I get my x equaling 1. Now I can check my work by simply coming up here and plugging the 1 in for the x. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so I got 10 to the negative second. And then 4 times 1 is 4, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So I got 10 to the negative second equaling 100 to the negative first. Really, this section draws on your understanding of the properties and the rules of exponents. 
So the next thing they do is I recognize that I have a negative exponent. A negative exponent means that this base is on the wrong side of a fraction bar. So I drop that down and it's 1 over 10 squared. Likewise, the 100 to the negative first just drops the 100 down. It's 1 over 100. And then you question yourself, is 1 over 10 squared equal to 1 over 100? They are. So that means that our x equal 1 must have been correct. Now, I've got a couple more examples. I'm going to go live now. I'll show step by step what I'm doing. Here's example 2. I've got 8 to the 5y is equal to 16 raised to the 3y plus 4 first step, I want to get it so I have like bases. I recognize that 8 is 2 to the third. 5y is just going to stay on the outside. In a similar way, 16 is 2 to the fourth. And then I've got the 3y plus 4 on the outside. I will need to distribute. This is power to a power concept. So I can say that this is 2 to the 15y equals 2. Now I'm going to have to distribute this. As I distribute this, this becomes 12y plus 16. 4 times 3 is 12y. 4 times 4 is 16. Now, for the second example, I'd like to explain why I'm allowed to set these exponents equal to one another. If you recall, we used our properties of logarithms, which is the same as the property of natural logs, uh, to do a previous homework. I am going to take the natural log of both sides. The natural log is just log base e. So I'm going to do the ln of this argument. 2 to the 15y. And of course, if I do a natural log on one side, I better do the natural log to the other side. So the ln of 2 raised to the 12y plus 16. And now I'm going to use one of our rules for natural logarithms, i.e. logarithms. It says that if you have an argument raised to a power, you're allowed to take that exponent and bring it in the front, make it a scalar, make it a multiplication. So I'm going to call this 15y times the natural log of 2. All I did was took the exponent, brought it to the front. In a similar way, I can take this exponent, the 12y plus 16, and multiply it by the natural log of 2. So I'm just turning it into a scalar. Now the natural log of 2 is a number. So I am permitted to divide both sides of the equation by that. And in essence, what is happening is my exponents are being set equal to one another. Now you don't have to do that every time. I just want to make sure you understand where it's coming from. I'm pulling those exponents in front of the natural logarithms. The natural logarithms are canceling. A watered-down version of this says when you have like bases, you are permitted just to set those exponents equal to one another. And now all I have to do is solve this simple equation. I can call this 15y take away 12y equaling 16. So 3y equals 16 divide by 3 and y will be 16 thirds, which is 5 and 1 third. If you wanted to, you can plug those back into here. I'd actually plug them in here where I already have the like bases and see that they are equivalent. It's a simple algebra equation, so I'm going to take it on faith that I didn't make any mistakes. Y will be 5 and 1 third.